What is up, everybody? Thank you so much for tuning in to another episode of Rocket Vlogs. My name is Brayden Carlson, and today we are finishing the tube fin rocket. Uh, finish being subjective because I don't know if it's going to get painted or not. We'll see. There are a couple odds and ends that I need to work on. Uh, since you saw it last time, it now has a motor mount in it. That is a 75 millimeter motor mount. Um, it kind of dawned on me that I might be pushing the phenolic coupler a little hard if I ever wanted to truly put a hard hitting 75 in here, like a four grain or like the L1940. So I've decided we're gonna reinforce the coupler and a great way to do that is outlined in one of my videos where I showed you the balloon trick where you put fiberglass cloth inside your coupler and then you inflate a balloon, balloon's latex, the fiberglass won't stick to it and you get a really nice smooth surface and that is very easy. So instead, I'm going to do it a really hard way for no reason. Actually, there is a reason. If you're familiar with this build, you'll remember that I accidentally cut up what turned out to be a full-length coupler tube for these tube fins. If um, I didn't realize it, so there's actually a couple splits between the sets of tube fins. I tried to make them the same. I failed. We're going to fill those gaps too. But what that left me with was two pieces of fiberglass coupler in this size. However, because they're fiberglass, they don't fit in the tube and they would be too short. I suppose it'd probably be okay if I glued the whole thing together, but for the simplicity of transport, I would like the top half to not be glued in. I've been staring at these on the shelf since I built this thing, trying to figure out what I'm ever going to use these for, and I landed on something. What we're going to do is we're going to measure the diameter and calculate the circumference of the outside of these pieces and do the same for the inside of this coupler tube. Then we're gonna take a Sharpie, mark the difference on these, cut slots out so they can pinch together and slide inside the coupler. If you're familiar with our 12 inch Wildman Punisher upscale, we did something similar with the 12 inch couplers. That's why the center coupler is like half inch thick wall with reinforced fiberglass. Uh, I could stand on it and use it as a trampoline. That thing is never going to break. So uh, this will make it nice and beefy and best of all be free because I already have this stuff sitting here. Before we get into it though, I do want to talk about the 12 inch Punisher and our double full scale Arcus that's on the back of this shirt. This was a last year's Airfest exclusive shirt that was only available for purchase leading up to Airfest where we flew the rocket. This year we are flying both the 12 inch Wildman Punisher and the 9-inch Arcus. The 9-inch Arcus is flying on an old stock Animal Motorworks N2800 Skidmark, which is the demo predecessor to the N2801. It's a 98 millimeter sparky motor that's like four feet long. It's going to be awesome. And not to be beat, the 12-inch Punisher is flying on an N2000, three M1297s and three LA50s for full O impulse of white lightning should be a giant, giant white flame, like 25, 30 feet long. And that rocket is supposed to go about 15,000 feet and just hit here under the speed of sound, which is crazy because it's a 12 inch diameter rocket that weighs 200 pounds. Now, if you're familiar with rocketry or my channel, you probably are familiar with the fact that these two rockets cost an unbelievable amount of money to put in the air. And I wanna thank everybody who's bought stickers done donations during our live streams and bought merch for helping contribute to the Punisher Fund. We do have one last round to go through here and that is a new t-shirt design right here. You can see it on the screen now. Taylor's girlfriend Sam did an amazing job doing the art for this just like she did with the Nigel merch. And you will only be able to get this t-shirt until the first day of Airfest this year. That means you have from the point that you are seeing this right now until August 30th to buy this t-shirt and then it will never be available again. Just like this Argus shirt. So just know if you have one of these Argus shirts, they will never be available again. You got it on the ground floor and that's the only floor. And that's how it's going to be with these designs as well. Featuring both the Punisher and the Argus as fun little cartoon characters. It's available in a few different colorways. So check them all out at rocketvlogs.com. And you know, I'm not gonna leave you high and dry without the discount code. Use the discount code AIRFEST30 for free shipping on anything and everything you order from rocketvlogs.com. That includes all the currently available Nigel Mercer APCP stuff, everything on the website, in your cart, free shipping. Use the discount code 
Airfest 30. There's also still spots available. You can buy a whole face of one of the fins for your company or whatever for $100. If you want to advertise your company, a small sticker on the side of the rocket is $25. If you want to do that, reach out to me at rocketvlogs911 at gmail.com. Now, let's work on this tube fin rocket. We'll get the coupler thing situated. We've got an ejection charge getting ready to be fired so we can do a full assembly ground test on this thing. And then after that, it will be ready to fly. I'm gonna try and fly it at Lucerne Dry Lake Bend here in Southern California, weather permitting uh, within the next couple weeks. So thanks for tuning in, here we go. Like I said in the intro, the first step here is to measure the circumference of the outside diameter of our fiberglass coupler pieces and the inside circumference of our standard phenolic coupler tube. From there, we just find the difference, measure it out on the fiberglass pieces, and prepare it for cutting. I used an angle grinder with a diamond cutoff wheel to cut these and I have to say this is my new favorite way to cut virtually any type of tubing. Once I got them both cut and test fitted it's time to bust out the epoxy and glue them in place. Yes, the comically oversized popsicle stick is necessary. For this step I'm using West System laminating epoxy and applying it with a brush. Once there's a healthy dose on the inside of the coupler I simply slid my reinforced pieces of coupler coupler right in. Now it's time to address the gaps between the tube fins. If you're not familiar with my channel, I like to say that there's no rocket project too big for popsicle sticks. So I took a couple of them, sanded them to size with my belt sander, glued them into the gap between the tube fins, and then finished the whole assembly off with a fillet made of five minute hobby epoxy. Nice and simple, but effective. After the glue dried on the inside of my coupler, I glued the coupled coupler with the coupler couplers inside the airframe to act as a coupler for the two airframe pieces. Should I repeat that or you got it? Next up, I marked out some lines for drilling holes into the airframe for rivets, shear pins, and electronics bay vents. I used a tube marking guide from hprtools.com and it was wonderful. HPR Tools is a new company started by my cousin Shane, or as you may know him, Posthart. He's selling some awesome modular fin guides, tube marking guides, and can custom make you electronic sleds like the one that's in this rocket. Please go support him at hprtools.com. Now it's time to drill those holes I just talked about. It's pretty straightforward, I drilled some holes. Just like that, this thing is ready for ground testing, so let's do it, shall we? Alright, 1.25 grams. Good. Three, two, one. Yeah, that should do it. That looks fine. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be honest, I didn't really shoot any sort of transitional clip here, so uh... Several days later. Okay, so I was just thinking about the ground test on the drive over here and how this violently ripped this apart and then realized that only four plastic rivets are uh... The rocket launch, what are you gonna do? Oh no, you can't name rocket slides, you bad dude. So I got the trusty bottle of CA, I decided I'm going to glue it together as well, because I don't really want to drop my motor case from 5,000 feet. So let's do that. I am not allowed to have onboard video. Yeah. I forgot the SD card, so no reason to put the camera in there and destroy it if something goes wrong. So, sorry everybody, I know you all only want onboard footage all the time, but can't help you. All right, well, uh, electronics are functioning at least. That makes one thing on this rocket so far cooperating. Sorry, no onboard video. Um, we'll get them next time. I'm gonna bring like 13 SD cards when we fly the N1000. <laughs> all right, let's go for the igniter in. I forgot the cap for the motor too. But you have tape? I do. You wanna rip me a piece of tape? <laughs> two wheat testers, the two rocket out there on XK 1103. We've got a cable cutter 700, 1103, going on E3, going in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, goodbye. <laughs> Can you make it a little louder next time? Yeah, you can do okay in the middle row. 
That shouldn't have happened. It's flight. I uh, strongly suggest you do that again. Yeah, I mean, the nose cone's on there. Okay, so we learned some things. Um, mostly that I gotta figure out the cable cutter thing. Cause while 5,000 feet with the man at Apogee wasn't so treacherous, 50,000 would be. Uh, and I don't really wanna find out what that looks like. Oh no my electrical tape. Anyway, uh, both the cable cutters blew out the backs again. If you're on my Patreon, you'll know that I struggled with that on the first ground test. Uh, I packed so much clay and grease and the O-rings in there that I'm not really sure how it managed to still pressurize that and push the O-rings out the bag, but I gotta figure that out. I gotta figure out what happened I looked at the Blue Raven data, it fired the main at the right altitude, and I'm sure the Easy Mini did too because it doesn't really have any provisions for a safety fire like the Blue Raven does. If You can set the Blue Raven to fire if it's descending over a certain speed, like if your drogue doesn't come out or whatever. Um, so it is 100% user error. I'm about 99% positive. So uh, I got to figure out what's going on with that. Pro tip, grease the inside of your uh, your rear closure so you can just wipe all that gross stuff out. Um, anyway, we're gonna work on that. Uh, probably do a lot of ground testing with the cable cutters and see if we can get that all situated. Otherwise, we might have to just swap to doing head-end deployment for the N1000, but I really don't want to because we've already purchased these and like have this whole setup planned out. Um, anyway, Thank you guys for watching. Be sure to go to rockyvlogs.com and buy the Punisher and Arcus Airfest 30 Mercs is only available until August 30th at 11.59 p.m. Central Time. I will be in Kansas and I will be pulling all the listings down. Use the discount code AIRFEST30 for free shipping on anything you buy from rocketvlogs.com. Um, yeah, if you wanna see behind the scenes content, pictures and stuff and all the stuff I'm working on in the background between these videos, Check me out on patreon.com slash rocket vlogs. If you don't listen to the podcast, please do. We had Kip Delgertis on. He talked about his rocket that went 293,000 feet. We've had Amy Howell, Bryce Chanis, Jesse Uliberry, and a bunch of other cool guests. And we like to just sit around and talk and have fun. We do live streams afterwards every Tuesday, except for this coming one because Shane and I will be in San Diego. So it'll be Wednesday night instead. Um, follow me on Instagram, BigB1011. And yeah. The tube fin tester, mostly successful. K1103 though, rips. One of my new favorite K motors for sure. I hadn't flown one yet. Peace.